Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios in Atlanta, Georgia, it's time for Atlanta Business Radio. Brought to you by OnPay. Built in Atlanta, OnPay is the top-rated payroll and HR software anywhere. Get one month free at OnPay.com. Now, here's your host. Lee Cantor here, another episode of GSU ENI Radio, and this is going to be a good one. Today on the show, we have Jessica Tripiti with Onyx. Welcome, Jessica. Hello, Lee. Thank you for having me. Well, before we get too far into things, tell us about Onyx. How are you serving folks? So, okay, yeah. So I'll give you like our little elevator pitch. So Onyx is a menstrual wellness brand. We are finding the solution or creating solutions for socially responsible pain management products for all menstruators. And we use the term menstruator because not every woman menstruates and not every menstruator is a woman. And uh, so what's the backstory? How did the, what was the genesis of the idea? So the, so both my co-founder and I, my co-founder, Elle McRae, uh, we we come from both non-business backgrounds, and we started Onyx with a single goal in mind. Um, we both realized that just dealing with period pain is unproductive, and just dealing with it is shouldn't be an option, and dealing with it should be. So we joined forces and initially had separate businesses within the same industry of femtech, and we're both using our creative skill set and t- technical expertise and shared passion for femtech to support menstruators through our business. So you said you both your co- co-founder and you were came from a non-business background. What mm-hmm. what kind of what does that mean non-business background? Yes. So my background um, I'm from fashion I'm a grad undergraduate from Fashion Institute of Technology and I'm studying textile design development and marketing. And Elle is a film student in Georgia State. So we don't really have that, I guess, the formal business background. And we're kind of using our creative mindset to maneuver through that. So coming from it, uh, from this problem you're trying to solve through this more creative lens, did you stumble upon a solution that kind of incorporates your backgrounds or your you were able to solve this by maybe looking at it through fresh eyes? Yes. Yeah, so um, I we think so. So we created a cramp relief stick that relieves pain directly at the source of period cramps and is infused with CBD. And we've also, we know that not all periods are the same and not all menstruators are made equal. So we designed with every menstruator in mind. Um, we created a multi-disc, which is kind of like an interlabial pad. And it's for menstruators who are not comfortable with insertion. And it's also infused with CBD. So how did you learn how to kind of make this type of a device? Like this seems like, I mean, that you need special skills. Like you can't just kind of do this in your kitchen table, can you? Um, so that's a good question. Um, so, uh, in my background in textile development and marketing, I do have background in fashion design. So I kind of know the production and technical development of building a product from, from paper to actual physical products. So from 2d to 3d. So I kind of had to break it down based on the layer of each product and how to transfer, transfer the CBD. And then of course we have to bring in OBGYNs and people with a scientific background. So when you came up with the idea, well, first, did you both come up with, you were both kind of exploring this femtech Mm -hmm. uh, Mm -hmm. area separately. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how did you, how did you even meet? Like, were you just friends? No, that's a good question. So there is a, a non-for-profit and we always try to call them out because they're so great. So there's a non-for-profit called Femtech Focus and their their focus is really to bring awareness to the Femtech industry, which is all about women's health. And that ranges from menstrual health to reproductive health um, and, and, all, and so on. And so we had uh, our mentor, Dr. Brittany Barreto, who is the co-founder of Femtech Focus. She had one-on-ones with us and she was like, you guys would be perfect together. She's like, Elle has that creative 
marketing background and you have that creative textile background and it would just really make a great fit. And that's how we kind of got started. And then um, we were testing the waters with one another and we created our own Femtech business podcast. And then we were like, yeah, this is, this is good. This is solid. I think this is going to work. And then we kind of co-found from there. And I guess you can say like business partner married. Now, um, do you have any advice for other maybe solo founders that then decide to go and get a co-founder? Because that's a different kind of adventure mm -hmm. you're signing up for. Mm -hmm. When mm -hmm. you're a solo founder, everything's kind of on you. Mm -hmm. But with mm -hmm. a, a partner, you know, I have a saying that with the right partner, you can do anything. I think it really is a one plus one equals three situation if you're lucky <laughs> enough to find the right partner. Yes. Yes, I, I totally agree. Yeah, we definitely, I've definitely found that that three um to my one <laughs> um so i guess to circle back on your question and for solopreneurs who are interested in finding a co-founder it's real it's kind of corny but like really find the yin to your yang find the person who fills the holes or that you're lacking your your weaknesses or someone who really supports you in the decisions that you're making but also at the same time challenges you like for it's it's good tension you want good tension not something that's always like when you're trying to talk to somebody it feels like a chore right so you need that friction but it has to be productive yeah. friction that makes a diamond yes. at the end not just yes. a piece of coal <laughs> exactly exactly and i think that's um that's how Elle and I have been working really well together in that aspect. Um, one of our mentors was saying how you might not get lucky in signing up for a co-founder. And we we're like, well, I, I think we're that 1% who found the perfect co-founder. Now, how did you get involved with the Main Street Entrepreneurship Seed Fund? Yeah, so Elle was originally, so she originally, before we signed together, she originally applied and I think she found out through her professor, um, through one of her entrepreneur courses, and she applied and she got in. And then once we signed on together, we were able to work on Main Street with one another. And it seems like you're really leaning into asking for help, getting help, being mentored. Has that been fruitful for you? Has that helped you grow? Yes, yes, most definitely. It's definitely advanced us to so many different horizons and we're so very fortunate for the mentors that we've come across and even if we bump into like let's say the wrong mentor not the wrong mentor but somebody who might not be able to help us in the direction that we're going we always try to ask um, do you have two or three people that you could recommend who specialize in this industry or specialize in this in this product now you you've used the phrase femtech before. That's the name of your podcast. Has femtech in it? Can you educate our listeners uh, about this? This is kind of a new. I mean, it's it's a old problem, but maybe it's a new uh, moniker for that problem. Can you talk about the femtech community that's being built? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the femtech community that is being built is really an exciting one. It's very woman centric healthcare. Um, there are a bunch of there are a bunch of femtech companies that I could recommend that are really helpful, or such as the Flow app. There's also Bloom Life. There's Kind Body. Um, it's really uh, to to really fill that gap for women's health, just because that has been on the back burner for so many years. For example, the clinical trials on women didn't occur until the 1990s, which is pretty crazy to me, um, and if you need to Google that and double check, that's totally fine. Um, yeah. So it's one of those where we're kind of like, there's so many other solutions out there. There are so many other over the counter medicines out there, but there aren't really specialized towards women and women's bodies and administrators and people who, who can and want to get pregnant. Now, have you found the community very collaborative um, yes. in terms of everybody's trying to help everybody and it's not the super cutthroat, you know, yes. zero sum game mentality that some of these uh, environments are? Yes, it's definitely been very collaborative. We've been very fortunate so far. It's definitely not a wolf type gang industry. Everybody understands that our, everyone's end goal is to help people. Uh, we really want to make the quality of life for people 
significantly improve. We all have the same goal in mind where we just want people to feel better and feel better about themselves. So it's been a very collaborative experience. We've been very fortunate with one another. It's one of those industries where like, let's say, uh, this, the wrong Zoom link was sent or somebody's 10 or five minutes late. We're all pretty understanding that it's OK. Like, it's just life. It, it occurs and we're going to move on from there. It's not really, oh, my gosh, you're you're 10 minutes late. Pound on you. Like, no, we know that you might have children or you have your own life going on. So it's pretty understanding for that matter. Now, any advice for young people that maybe are in college um, and that they always thought, oh, I'm going to get a job. I'm going to get a job. But you've chosen, I guess, to keep your uh, one foot in each camp, like maybe you'll get a job, but you also have this side hustle, but this could turn into your job at some point, I'm sure, if you get funding and if you get, you know, super high growth. Uh, mm-hmm. Any advice? Are, are you are you seeing people opening their mind to, hey, I can choose myself for a career and I can bet on myself oh, yeah. and my kind of interests okay. and, and passions? Yeah, I think especially within this past year, With COVID, um, there's been a significant increase of LLCs and small businesses opening up within the United States. And especially for what we've noticed, even through our own customer discovery survey, the millennials and Gen Z that do experience period pain, they not only identify it, but they want a solution and they're willing to pay for the solution. And I think that's a lot of what my classmates as well at FIT um, and just people who are graduating, they want to either find the, find the opportunity or make it for themselves, which is really fantastic. And then when you do that, when you're in control of your own destiny, that gives you, I mean, then it's on you. You got to take responsibility. You know, it's a, it's it's, not a nine to five, it's a 24 seven. Exactly. (laughs) It's not you wake up, you drink your coffee, you walk your dog, and then you go to work. It's no, you wake up, you go to work, period. (laughs) Right. And it's probably most of what you're thinking about are ways to solve the problems that you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And just simply because we do have that that kind of quality of life on the, I don't want to make it so serious, but kind of that quality of life on the line, yes, it is very very serious. We want to make sure that we're sourcing ethically, sourcing sustainably, we're responsibly producing our products, um, especially because I come from an ethical and sustainability background. And I've seen firsthand on what fast fashion could do to the planet. For example, not to get off topic, but fast fashion or textiles are the leading pollution source on the planet. So I don't want to be part of the problem. I want to make sure that our products are only part of the solution. Well, congratulations on all the momentum you have now. And what stage are you at at a business? Do you have a product that's for sale? Are you looking for partners um, like retailers? Like where, like where are you at in the growth of your company? So I'm going to throw in our ask if that's all right. So we are pre-revenue and we are prototyping. We we are finalizing our prototypes and we are looking for R&D facilities who are interested or and even manufacturers who do custom production who are interested in partnering with us for for a CBD non-wovens period menstrual product line. So you're out there kind of sourcing right now? Mm -hmm. We are sourcing. We are pre-revenue and we are seeing a lot of traction and we're really, really excited for what's to come. And are you finding that um, you're getting the attention of investors as well? Yes. So that's a great question. So um, it's fun to really talk to an investor about this because once you mention period or even vagina or CBD, it really, it's a, it's a lot of like hot terms, trending words going on that I'm throwing at people. So more and more investors are actually being very conscious on how they're asking and they're being very conscious on what to ask because they understand that not only is this a solution, but it's a potential growth. For example, the femtech industry is projected to reach $1.3 trillion by 2025. So in four years from now, and also the menstrual industry is projected to reach 66 million by 2027. And then on top of that, we have the CBD 
um, industry who's projected to reach 20 billion by 2024. So we have our hands in a lot of industries and the investors that we talk to see that. Exciting times, exciting times. You must be very proud of what you've accomplished thus far. Uh, Thank you, yes. <laughs> if somebody wants to learn more um, and maybe get on your waiting list or just, you know, yeah. kind of connect with you, is there a website? Yeah. I know you're yes. in the process of building one, but. Uh, yes. So we are in the process of building one, um, and you can find us on weareonyx.us. So onyx is O N Y X. My name is Jessica. So. I think our email is going to be hey at we are onyx on us, but you'll find everything on the website. Good stuff. Well, again, congratulations on all your success and uh, you're doing important work and we appreciate you. Thank you, Lee. Thank you so very much. And thank you so much for your time. All right. This is Lee Cantor. We will see you all next time on GSU ENI Radio. Mm-hmm.